dear Mr. Ambassador, dear Charles, dear everyone, it is a pleasure for me to be part of this webinar regarding nature in the Caribbean and uh, <clears throat> with the, the importance for AFD to intervene in uh, nature conservation and climate change. So I will uh, ask to Mr. Ambassador, uh, French Ambassador Francis Etienne in charge of the Eastern Caribbean states Barbados and the OECS to have uh, an introducing, introducing, introducing remarks uh, for the for the beginning, Mr. Ambassador. Thanks, Guillaume, and uh, hello to everyone. Very happy to be with you today. Um, to put it simply, basically two questions: What do we see? What can we do? What do we see? We see three things. First, that the situation and especially in the Caribbean, is deteriorating. We have the effect of global warming, we have rising sea levels, we have signs of coastal erosions, and of course we have a collection of disasters taking place every year, and we're just entering now in June the new cyclone seasons. Uh, fact number two, Caribbean countries are among the most exposed and the most impacted. We all know that the concept of SIDS, small island developing states, uh, mean the most, uh, the most exposed in terms of, of risks, uh, natural risk, I mentioned that before, uh, and in a matter of hours, sometimes of minutes, a country like it happened in St. Vincent in 2019, like it happened in Dominica in 2017 with Maria, can be wide off its GDP. Something uh, we have the experience in Europe, but that's, um, this goes back to the time of World War II. Uh, impact is very powerful and can be ignored. And the third element, third fact of what we can see is that there is no absolute fatality. We can prevent if we cannot cure everything, we can at least try to prevent those things to happen the, the best way we can. And if we can't prevent them all, we can act together. So what can we do? Basically, three things. The first is to promote regional cooperation and as much as we can in the Caribbean regional integration. Uh, we have specific issues like sargassum, like the biodiversity conservation, like transports, where we need to increase the interconnectivity between the islands. And on those very specific topics and very concrete matters, the AFD has already been extremely active. On biodiversity, we had the announcement of the program together with the OECS made by State Secretary uh, Zakharopoulou in, in May and confirmed at the CRAG in, uh, on the 8th and the 9th of March this year. On Sargassum, we have great prospect with SACOP2, and each time AFD is playing a crucial role. The second thing we can do is to act together. Put simply, have a team friends which is effective in terms of cooperation. That means AFD not alone, French Embassy not alone, or various services of the Embassy on their own, but act acting together as we, <coughs> sorry, as we did when we went to Barbados together with the economic advisor based in Panama on the 15 and 16 of May, when we had very effective discussion and, and concrete discussion with the AU delegation, with the Caribbean Development Bank and with various multilateral organizations. And the third one, third way we can act is to adapt our way of working. We have to green our cooperation and we have to adapt our rules. This is why we have a very important summit in Paris, for instance, next June on 22nd and the 23rd for a new global financial pact where we need to update our rules for concessional loans, for supporting SIDS, and for the management of the debt of the most exposed countries. So big prospect, big things at stake, but a strong will to act, as I said, together and decisively. Voila, I hope 
our discussion will be fruitful. I have no doubt, actually, it will be fruitful. And I thank you for allowing uh, me to say those few words. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. <clears throat> it is uh, really quite important to, to promote, as you said, uh, the regional cooperation with the different uh, countries of the of the region, and at the same time to, <clears throat> to promote the, the, the French team uh, and to, uh, to, to work with the other partners of the region, and in particular with the EU. So I will let the floor to uh, Charles Trottmann, so, which is uh, the director of the Free Ocean Department at AFD uh, since uh, July 2020. So in charge of uh, Indian, uh, Atlantic and Pacific uh, Ocean uh, with different co foreign countries on the French overseas territories. So Charles. Thank you very much, Guillaume, and thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for the kind introductory words. And of course, thank you, everybody, for being online with us today. If we take nature as our guide, we will never get lost. That were the wise words of Cicero, like 2,000 years from now. And those words, they remain accurate more than ever in our present times, where we know as a human species that we put now nature to a tremendous threat. Of course, we are all aware of the importance of this subject. It has been widely highlighted uh, by the report of the IPBES on the assessment of biodiversity in the last few years. Uh, it has blown the whistle loud and clear, and we know now that uh, more than 15% of all wild species are endangered. We know that more than a third of the global stocks of fish are overexploited and so on. And at the same time, we all know that nature remains uh, crucial to the well-being of our populations as a primary source of living for a vast proportion of our fellow citizens. And this, of course, is true everywhere, but it is especially true here in the Caribbean. This region is home to 1% of the world biodiversity. It is home to 10% of all coral reefs, and it is home of a large part of the world's endemic species. And of course, Many local communities rely heavily on marine and coastal ecosystems, which are uh, sources, primary sources of, of livelihood for the population, while being very much at risk. And as Mr. Ambassador has highlighted, the occurrence of natural risk, natural disasters is very high in this, uh, in, in this area. And of course, and it will uh, be more and more a danger with uh, what is happening with global climate change. So for all those reasons, uh, the preservation of nature, the preservation of biodiversity is increasingly a priority of our action for us at AFD Group. Um, last year, as a group, we have committed more than half a billion euros worldwide to the preservation of nature. And we are aiming to more and more mainstream nature preservation in all our operation, as we have been doing with uh, climate change uh, since uh, a couple of years now. We thrive to support the restoration of biodiversity when the ecosystems have been degraded. We try to, to foster its protection when the ecosystem is threatened. And we try to help governments, help communities, local communities, support the marine, the terrestrial protected areas and foster nature-based solutions. In the end, what we want is to promote a pro-nature development, pursuing the well-being of populations while helping the ecosystem thrive. This is what you try to do um, as AFD, not just AFD, but the group AFD with our colleagues from Probaco that can act at, um, at the side of the private sector and Expertise France that bring technical expertise and project management facility to uh, help uh, pursue this common goal. And of course, the preservation, uh, sustainable, sustainable use of nature, natural resources has been and will more and more be at the heart of our strategy of our action here at our regional direction in the Caribbean. Let me just quote some example of project that we have been conducting or that we are planning to conduct in the region to highlight um, different aspects of what is at stake. Um, the first area of, um, of effort is management of and protection of forest and natural areas. We have been conducting several programs, for example, uh, sustainable forest livelihoods with uh, EU funding in Guyana and Suriname to help the government in the durable management of forest areas, relying especially on the uh, indigenous local communities. And that also allows us to share the expertise that we can have in French Guyana. We have also been pursuing um, forest management in the Dominican Republic. 
A second area in which we are trying to, to, to work is the promotion of nature-based solutions. We have been uh, implementing a project that is named CARIBSAN with interreg funding from the European Union using uh, constructed wetlands to manage uh, used water and sludge in a natural way. And so doing that, we use a know-how that has been developed, implemented in the French territory of Martinique, and we try to share it with other states, with other communities in the Caribbean. That, that is also at the heart of our mandate in uh, the Three Oceans Department that I have the honor to, to lead, to try and foster this cooperation, this exchange of experience and of know-how between the French territories, overseas territories, and their neighbors in the area. A um, third project that we are um, launching now is um, preservation and restoration of mangroves. And Mr. Ambassador quoted it. Uh, mangroves are really a critical ecosystem. They play um, a very important role in carbon capture, in the stabilization of coastal areas. They're also a, a shelter for biodiversity. And so they help both mitigate and adapt to the consequences of climate change. So that's why we are launching an ambitious program with the OECS that will be funded by the French government to help uh, the preservation of mangroves ecosystem across the Caribbean. And then, last but not least, let me quote what we are trying to do in supporting the management of the Sargasson crisis that is affecting the whole region. Um, we are trying to act in close cooperation with uh, the French territories to help address the, the various issues raised by the, the sargassum. And there are many of them, like scientific research, monitoring, detection, protection of coastal areas, collection of sargassum, economic development, and so on. And so we will try to, to bring together public donors, private partners to, to help stimulate innovative solutions to this very pressing problem. Let me just finish by quoting another wise man, French, this one, Victor Hugo, who once said, it is a sad thing to think that nature is speaking and we are not listening. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have just set aside a few moments today to try to listen to what nature has to say to us. And thus, I will wish to all of you a very fruitful moment of listening. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Charles, for this fruitful uh, word uh, regarding uh, <clears throat> the, the, the involvement of uh, the, the AFD group. Uh, regarding biodiversity issues and uh, climate change. Uh, so now I will let the floor to uh, Karen McDonald, which is the CEO of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. Uh, she's a specialist of the Conservation Trust Fund, and she used to, to work several, several years uh, for different uh, Conservation Trust Fund in the region. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Karen, if you could uh, go ahead now with your presentation. Thank you. Karen, we don't hear you. <clears throat> so perhaps some technical issues. Uh, so just perhaps uh, just to, to say that uh, AFD is supporting the Caribbean Biodiversity Front since a couple of years now, and we also have intervention uh, with a, a, a contribution to the Fondation Haitienne for la Biodiversité, which is part of the CBF. So now perhaps, uh, Karen, you have the capacity to, to speak and, to, and for us to hear you. Are you hearing me now? Yes, it's okay. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. The floor is yours. And I have a very, very short presentation. I'm not sure if it will come up. So good morning again to everybody, Monsieur Ambassador and the other presenters this morning. My name is Karen McDonald Gale and I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. And I was asked this morning to speak a little bit more about biodiversity in, in the Caribbean. Um, so this presentation really is to tell you a little bit more about that and near the end, hopefully I will have a chance to tell you a little bit about the work of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. Next slide, please. Oh, I, I think I'm able to change. I will <laughs> work on that. Thank you. Um, so first, a little bit of context in terms of the map of the Caribbean. As you can see, we are 
uh, widespread across the Caribbean Sea. As was mentioned by the ambassador, we have a number of small island developing states um, going from what I would call uber small, very small, to some of the larger islands that we have in the Greater Antilles. And of course, some on um, both the, the South Coast and the, the, the coast of Central America. And it's important to understand the, the, where these countries have come from and that, that there are high populations um, in those islands that are very dependent on biodiversity and a range of nature and natural resources. Sorry, let me try my best to do the slide. There you go. Um, in particular, and I thank my partners and colleagues at the Caribbean Natural Resources Institute for this slide, which I won't ask you to read, but to show you a lot of the numbers that are associated with biodiversity in the Caribbean. As is rightly said, the biology, the biology and biodiversity of the Caribbean is unique. We are home to a range over 11,000 species and a lot of them are endemic um, and only found in the Caribbean region, which is very important to note. So what, are, what is important for us is how are we going to make sure that some of these species, both plant, animal species, are able to continue and to work with the, the countries and the world in terms of how we preserve what, is, what are global treasures. So much more than local and national treasures or regional treasures, these are global treasures. In particular, it's important to highlight the value of biodiversity. Much more than pretty flowers or cool animals, biodiversity is very important to a range of aspects of Caribbean life, global life. Biodiversity ensures the health and food security um, across the region. And millions of species work together to provide us with an array of fruits, we have our indigenous products, which we would only find in the Caribbean in terms of diseases, fighting diseases. We know that there are a range of possibilities. Those of us who grew up in the Caribbean know the, the value of our plants, in particular our medicinal herbs, and that there are a range of medicines that um, are, are, are based on the biodiversity that's only found in the Caribbean, and that's important. And then, of course, the biodiversity Biodiversity due to protected natural areas is also important in terms of li linking and creating areas of, of better health. And, and it's, it's proven that higher rates of biodiversity have been linked to an increase in human health. So it's important for us to, to remember that when we think about the value of biodiversity beyond, as I said, what you see out there. We also know that biodiversity is good business and big, big business. And according to the work, Economic Forum, um, over $44 million, trillion dollars is based solely on natural resources. And therefore it's important for us to think about how we are using our biodiversity and where, where we can make the links in terms of, of business, conser conserving so that there is continued business and prosperity and moving forward. It's also important for us to note, as I said, the, in the Caribbean, we live very closely to our ecosystems. It's, we don't have the, the luxuries of getting away as easily as other countries. And humans derive approximately $125 trillion in value from natural ecosystems each year. This is again from the World Economic Forum. And so it's important that those of us who need to have ways of working and operating with nature have that ability. And of course, we know the last one well, and I am very happy to hear the references made already to sargassum, to mangrove restoration, um, and the, the distinct value that mangroves, coral reefs pre present in terms of being able to create opportunities for and, and help with protection of our natural resources in the, in the event of the heavier and more destructive hurricanes and other rain events that we are already, and rain events as well as the opposite of rain events, drought events that we are now experiencing due to climate change. So these things are all very important to us in terms of why biodiversity needs to be preserved. And just to flip the coin a little bit and talk about some of the stressors, again, I won't read the slides in detail, and I think we have already touched on some of these. But the idea that 
the loss of biodiversity in the Caribbean is, is, is a major consequence. Um, habitat loss is occurring at a rapid rate due to uh, development and overdevelopment. The rise in invasive species has been at a great level and um, of course then threatens the endemic species of our own countries. The overexploitation um, due to various practices that we have as well as investments that may, may be in the area and also leading to pollution. And of course, we've all discussed climate change and associated um, issues with global warming. So the idea that these are major factors that of course are exacerbated by the size of our islands and the other impacts that we have in terms of major economic issues are important to us as we move forward. And in terms of what the Caribbean and this, these numbers are actually global, but to, to, to give an impact, a, a picture of what's already happening and what we're already seeing in terms of biodiversity loss, there's a major impact just on the value of what we can do and what we can preserve. And there is therefore the need for us to think about how we find the balance between growth development and biodiversity. So um, pictures, I think hopefully some of you have seen and know um, of, of Usain Bolt, who is a Jamaican runner, well-known, world famous, fastest man in the world, so far, still the fastest man in the world. Um, and a, a quote from Jamaica, which speaks to being small, but being large, because it is very important that we talk and think about um, our islands in a different way. Islands, of course, are both the land portion of the program, but also the ocean portion. And indeed, throughout the Caribbean, we are surpassed by our exclusive economic zone that is water-based, that is marine-based, over that which is land-based. And so the, the blue lines will be the ocean, and the green lines are, are, are um, terrestrial-based. So in the Caribbean, we also have, and one of the focuses of the, the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund has been on the balance between the terrestrial and the marine aspects of our work, and in particular, marine biodiversity. It's very critical to us that we think about what we're doing in terms of marine biodiversity and how we balance both what, what's happening in the waters and what's happening on land. And just to round off, off to, to, to follow up on what the ambassador so rightly said, a lot of the work that we have to do, therefore, is balanced with being islands who are, who are and nations and island nations, as well as being in a region where, where there is only benefit in us working together at a regional level. So the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, with support from a number of donors, and most recently, the government of France and AFD and FFM has been working to look at ways of working on the regional architecture for biodiversity and, and sustainable conservation through conservation financing. And we are very pleased to be doing work and, and promoting those ideas of conservation and regional development together. And we look forward to working more on ideas that build, ideas that are from the Caribbean, that build the Caribbean, which is a concept of the National Conservation Trust Funds that we're working with, to develop ideas for growth of biodiversity systems, financial systems that will make sure that our biodiversity can go can last for a long time to come. Thank you very much for your time. And I am sure I will be glad to answer any questions that you may have throughout or to hear more about the work of AFD. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen, for this presentation of the CBF and the, the importance, uh, again, of the, the global ecosystem, of the different ecosystem, in particular the, the marine and the coastal ecosystem for, for the small Iceland, which are heavily here dependent of the, of, uh, of, uh, the, the, the ecosystem for, for the economic uh, activities and for the, the, the social and the cultural uh, aspect in, in their life. Uh, so now I, I will uh, we will go to the to the first session, which is a session so called uh, "What are the modalities of intervention of the FD group in the area to preserve biodiversity?" 
So, so just perhaps a few words to recall uh, what is uh, the FD group. Huh? So uh, we we contribute to the implementation of the France uh, policies for sustainable development and international solidarity. And the group includes so AFD, uh, which finance the public sector, the NGOs, the research and the training. Uh, it's a subsidiary Proparco, which is dedicated to the private sector. And uh, Expertise France, which is an interministerial uh, agency for international technical cooperation, we joined the group in January <coughs> 2022. Uh, just to recall that AFD Group represents now nearly uh, 3,600 employees and is now active in more than uh, 150 countries on 11 overseas departments and territories. So just uh, perhaps also to recall that the group finance supports the transitions and uh, that we are fully aligned with the Paris agreements uh, and now with the global uh, biodiversity framework reached at the COP15 in Montreal in December uh, 2022. Uh, again, I, I will not uh, uh, going back to the fact that uh, there is a clear link between climate change and, uh, and biodiversity conservation. The both are, are clearly linked. And so uh, it is clearly important to, uh, to have a, a intervention with these both objectives to, to preserve uh, the planet. Uh, so as you know, urgent action is needed <coughs> for, both, for both of them. And we know that now that 75% uh, of terrestrial environment and 66% of marine environments are already severely, severely degraded. So for that reason, it is crucial for a group like AFD to intervene massively on this specific issue. So I will let the, the floor, first of all, to Clara Dufresne, which is uh, the, uh, in charge of uh, different projects at the regional level in our directorate of the Caribbean. So Clara, if you could start. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Uh, Mr. Ambassador Charles, uh, you all. Uh, hello, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, to speak a little bit about our ac actions in the Atlantic Ocean Directory. So, based in Fort de France, the Atlantic Ocean Directory covers 16 territories, including three outermost departments where AFD can work. It is there are Guadeloupe, Martinique, and uh, French Guyana. And also, it includes foreign states, three of them having a representative office uh, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Suriname also competent for Guyana. The Atlantic Ocean Directory develops cooperation activities. We try to pool resources, spread positive externalities, and share knowledge on subjects of common interests. Climatically and environmentally, this area of small island developing states is at the forefront of the consequences of climate change. The region stands out for its um, exceptional biodiversity, but also combines all the natural risks, as it has already been said. Thus, biodiversity is a central priority of the strategy and the new strategy of the, of the directory. So we have several tools to do so. Um, so our tools are, um, are, are, are grants. Um, yes, sorry. I, <laughs> So first of all, we, we have uh, grants. Um, for example, we, we had a grant to the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. Um, it has, uh, Karen I, he was a speaker, so she has illustrated that very well, but this is one of several projects funded by AFD through conservation trust funds. This support aims to a long-term sustainable development and the protection of regeneration of biodiversity. We also have, so there was a, a, a 4 million grant, 2 million of AFD and 2 million of uh, FEFEM, the, the International Fund for Environment. So we also had a grant to the Haitian Biodiversity Fund of 11 million euro. Um, the, the Haitian Biodiversity Fund is a national conservation fund member of the, of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund um, for Haiti. Uh, it has the capacity to intervene strongly on sustainable conservation actions and of biodiversity, but it's also a, a young structure because it was created in 2018. And so in addition to strengthening its financial capacity, the project also integrates an institutional support to, to enhance the governance. Um, 
So that, that, that are uh, grants for, um, in the, based on the budget of France, but we also have grants uh, from the European Union, so it's delegated grants. And for example, we had one delegated grant from the EU to support a multi-country forest governance, including Guyana. So it's a total project of 24 million euro, including 3 million to Guyana. The objective of the program is to contribute to the sustainable management of forests in eight projects, including one in Guyana. The countries have been selected because of their progress in the implementation of the forest law enforcement, governance and trade of the European Union. So it provides each country an appropriate support to its needs to complete the, the enforcement of the law. Um, that are uh, grants. We also have research grants, uh, such as feasibility studies. So, for example, we will finance in 2023 two feasibility studies, one on mangroves and one on sargassum. So, the total amount of the feasibility studies is uh, uh, 300,000 um, euros because we will launch, based on the feasibility studies, important projects in 2024 as it has already been stated. Uh, we also have uh, a, a FEXT, uh, the, the tool FEXT, with, which is a French expertise tool. Uh, so we can take the example of CARIBSAN, which is an inter-Caribbean cooperation project that promotes the use of, of uh, planted vegetative filters for wastewater treatment, but Virginie is on the, on the conference and um, is a speaker as well, so she, she will uh, uh, she, she will talk about it because the International Water Office is the project's implementing agency. Um, as for tool, we also have uh, loans and technical assistance. So it's um, technical assistance that will accompany uh, that will accompany loans. So for example, we have a credit line to the uh, CDB, which is the Caribbean Development Bank. So it's uh, intermediate financing for biodiversity. So we have in portfolio, we have 33 million USD, but when additional credit lines uh, of 50 million USD will be signed in July to support impactful projects in the member states of the CDB. Alongside the new credit line, a Caribbean investment facility, which is a grant delegated from the European Union through AFD, will provide 4 million for technical assistance to the CDB. And out of the 4 million, approximately 500,000 euros will be dedicated to biodiversity related initiatives. For example, it could be mobilized to recruit experts working on biodiversity or to finance nature-based solution projects addressing coastal erosion, mangroves, and for example, sanitation issues. Um, the ultimate goal is that CDB adopts guidelines and employs skilled people to raise awareness on biodiversity and enhance the capacity building efforts in its member states in the region. Um, we also have uh, the tool uh, FICOL. So the FICOL is a, uh, it's a, a tool for co-financing in grants decentralized cooperation projects. It is, for example, uh, a French city with another uh, city in a foreign country. But it can also be, for example, a federation of municipalities or a department or a region having a project with another public group in, a, in, a, in another independent state. Uh, we, we don't have always the same of uh, administrative forms, so it can uh, be a little bit uh, scaled to what uh, the public entities want to do. Um, it's a tool to promote cooperation at the service of the uh, sustainable development goals and um, its projects for the benefits of communities in the countries where AFD operates. So we have two different um, uh, actions, like way of action. So one is for the least developed countries and the one is for the middle income countries, but it's kind of uh, uh, the same except from the range of AFD financing, because for the middle income countries, it can go up to two millions. 
um, for the co-financing of AFD, so AFD can finance 70% maximum of the total amount of the projects. So it means that 30% must be co-financing, but the co-financing can be in hard currency or in soft, like for example, valuation of human resources. So it has um, to be a, a project uh, that are, um, uh, pro um, for example, strategic partnership or exchange of experience. It can also be, it's, it's, it's quite large what we can finance in, in FICOL tool. So it can also be investment or project management assistance. Um, for example, we have one project uh, currently that is carried out by uh, Martinique Regional Council with, with the states of Dominica and St. Lucia uh, around biodiversity because it's called Caribiota. Uh, it's a project uh, of um, uh, sharing knowledge on biodiversity of these three, three territories and it's based on the concept of an exploration mission and it has been already conducted in uh, several global biodiversity hotspots by the National Museum of Natural History. And it aims to preserve biodiversity in these three different ter territories. Um, yeah, it's all for me. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Clara, for this presentation of the different tools of uh, AFD. Just to, to recall that we also have the capacity to to provide some non-sovereign loan, but it's true that it's not so frequent in the biodiversity area, but we are just uh, for the moment in the destruction of a big uh, non-sovereign loan uh, for in Argentina, for example, for, for supporting the, the network of the, of the protected area in, this, uh, in the, con the <coughs> province of Santa Fe. So it's another tool that could be also be able to, uh, to, 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 be, to be put in place. So uh, I'm just to recall that uh, in 2022, sorry, uh, we provide uh, at the global level six, 661 million of euros uh, for biodiversity uh, projects. Uh, just now, we will uh, get the floor to Nicolas Chenet, which is the director of the Sustainable Development Department at Expertise France since uh, 2017. So, uh, Nicolas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, good uh, morning, uh, good afternoon for one in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, so, I'm um, very happy to, to be with you to talk about this, this topic. So, uh, as it was already explained by, uh, by Guillaume, Expertise France is the French uh, interministerial uh, implementing uh, agency. Uh, so, uh, we are part of the AFD group uh, since uh, more than uh, one year now. And uh, we are uh, basically, um, as an implementing agency, uh, we're responsible for designing and implementing uh, projects. Uh, on international fundings or French uh, government or AFD, of course, uh, funding directly. Uh, so I would say one of the specificity of uh, Expertise France is that uh, we are uh, able to cover all uh, uh, the countries uh, in the world. We don't have a limitation of, of our mandate uh, except uh, for, for France, basically. Uh, so, and I think it's quite interesting in the region, we are able to cover all uh, the countries and OCT of the, of the region. And I would even say that it's, it's part of our um, um, mandate from the French government to be able to have a quite extensive uh, coverage uh, in terms of uh, geographies. Uh, and uh, we are operating uh, so in in the region uh, and especially in the uh, in the topic uh, uh, of biodiversity we are operating mainly on the uh, european union funds uh, so um, uh, but uh, of course the in uh, in the, the framework of biodiversity the the european union priorities and the french government priorities are very much aligned so um, uh, we are very uh, uh, happy to, to move on these programs. Um, but the, the way of uh, operating, I would say that um, 
mainly and 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 uh, I would say the most frequently or way of uh, operating is uh, based on the bilateral and and multilateral dialogues uh, with uh, the governments, uh, with uh, the ministries, or uh, of course with the local uh, stakeholders, uh, and we try to build uh, up projects and initiatives. Uh, that are designed really uh, with uh, all uh, uh, local uh, stakeholders and, and, and partners. Uh, and, uh, and that's uh, mainly the, the way we, we proceed, uh, especially, especially in, the, in the region. Uh, we try also uh, to uh, favor uh, the most, uh, well, the more possible, uh, the regional cooperation. Uh, and I think, of course, when we talk about marine biodiversity, for example, this is a key issue in the region to 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 uh, to uh, to favor this uh, uh, regional cooperation. Um, I, I will mention very quickly uh, two programs uh, funded by uh, European Union that uh, we are working uh, with uh, uh, and uh, that we are uh, mandated uh, to uh, to implement the, the the program in the region. Uh, so we just uh, recently started uh, in 2023 um, a program called Euroclima uh, Caribbean. Uh, Euroclima is, um, I would say, is, is quite a brand of European Union and very, uh, and we have it has a long-term experience in uh, Latin America, uh, with uh, projects uh, covering uh, many topics uh, and uh, and specifically in the region, uh, the topics uh, that um, the European Union uh, wants to cover are circular economy, renewable energy, uh, biodiversity protection, and climate change adaptation. Uh, so it's a 26 million euros uh, program that uh, uh, we implement uh, with uh, UNDP and, and GIZ uh, on 12 uh, on sorry 16 uh, 16 Caribbean uh, uh, countries. So uh, while well, this project uh, has just started, as I was mentioning, but uh, we are already uh, starting the first national dialogues and and trying to uh, to see what are the main needs that we can cover in the framework of this program that uh, is uh, very promising for uh, for the region. Um, I will mention also uh, the Resembid program, uh, which is um, a bit older because it started five years ago, uh, almost, and uh, well, maybe more, four years. So the Resembid program is covering, covering the 12 Caribbean OCTs, uh, so uh, Dutch, uh, British, uh, and uh, the French uh, Saint Barthélemy program um, uh, OCT. Uh, so uh, it's uh, 40 million uh, program uh, once again based on the, the country uh, while well, OCT dialogues. Uh, also, we uh, have a strong focus funded by the European Union. Uh, again, uh, we have a strong focus on uh, 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 local dialogues and national dialogues. So we try to uh, to be very uh, focused on this uh, on on these topics. Um, the three topics covered by the program are marine, marine biodiversity, renewable energy, and climate change resilience. Um, and um, if we talk more specifically about uh, marine biodiversity, I could well of course the focus is about uh, monitoring. Uh, biodiversity protection and restoration. I could mention um, uh, coastal uh, ecosystem monitoring uh, program uh, funded in uh, Aruba, uh, analyzing uh, the water quality in, uh, in BVI, uh, protecting marine parks in, uh, in Anguilla, uh, working on the uh, marine ecosystem resilience in, uh, in Curaçao, uh, and in terms of uh, restoration, talking about maybe um, uh, restoring marine bi biodiversity in, uh, in Lake Bay, in, uh, in Bonaire, uh, specifically on, on seagrass and coral reef, or a project funded um, uh, about uh, resilience of the coral reef in Cayman Island. So it's quite uh, diverse and, and the program is still ongoing. So we will be very happy to share the, the first very promising results of all these projects funded uh, in the framework of this program. Uh, but um, uh, to mention also that the key issue we have now is to share uh, our experiences and to share uh, at the regional level uh, the good practices that uh, are coming up uh, from this uh, from this project. So well, we would be very happy to to discuss more about uh, all this uh, this project and and uh, and to uh, try to uh, build up on our experience in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola, for your presentation on the <clears throat> the different issues uh, uh, with uh, Expertise France. 
so perhaps uh, I will let the, the floor to uh, to the different uh, uh, <coughs> uh, people involved in this uh, webinar. Uh, I just uh, raised some questions that I've seen in the in the chat. So one of them <coughs> is uh, regarding the uh, the implication of uh, the public or the, the civil society uh, in developing the solution to address uh, local biodiversity issues. I think it could be a quite interesting question for both of you, Clara and Nicolas. Could you try to answer and to, 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 to say how uh, in, uh, in the implementation of the project or in the instruction of the project to try to, uh, to take into account uh, the, 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 the advice on the uh, the, uh, the 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 comments of the of the different counterparts, and in particular of the civil society. Lara or Nicola, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, um, we have, of course, um, first we we pass through uh, national focal points, of course, uh, every time. So we have, um, and um, and maybe it's uh, it's our key. Uh, partner in the in the in all the countries and all cities we are operating so we pass through this uh, national focal points that are of course uh, designated by the governments and then they are directly linked to the civil society we try to communicate uh, of course a lot on what we are doing and try to uh, so we have um, usually in in this kind of project a designing phase uh, that is um, quite uh, heavy i would say because uh, the needs are very global and very integrated so we try to really to be in in, uh, in direct and permanent contact with uh, with the civil society but i would say it's it's always through uh, the the government and through the the national focal point that we are trying to um, uh, to integrate uh, the civil society needs uh, that normally and and in general in in the region i would say the government is, is really close by thank you clara do you would like to add something yeah i'm really sorry i was disconnected so i haven't heard the question really sorry about that <clears throat> now the, the question was uh, are uh, afd is able to uh, to take into account the advice on the uh, the the comments of the different uh, people on in particular the civil society in the in the region when we are uh, at the instruction phase or uh, during the implementation of the project uh, yes, that's a very good question. We are always trying to co-construct uh, the different projects we ha we lead with the civil society in, and to include um, and to include them in the in the reflection of our projects and also to include minorities, uh, for example, women, uh, for example, in our mangroves projects that will be a very important aspect of the projects. Uh, to uh, include the the, uh, the different um, minorities in our in our projects. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, we, we have also a question of Charlene, which is asking what is IFD doing to limit sargasso pollution. But I think that it could be taken into account during the the, the, the next session. Uh, regarding uh, regional response to preserve biodiversity. Uh, ju just to raise per perhaps a question on my side is uh, regarding the fact that uh, 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 what is the value add of AFD because uh, in the Caribbean, but it is al also the case in many other uh, regions in the world, there is several uh, 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 stakeholders, there is several partners, and I would like to know uh, are we are able as a group with the different entities, so uh, AFD on one side, Expertise France on the other side, are we are able to work first together uh, to be able to provide uh, expertise and, and to be able to, uh, to provide to the different uh, partners in the region uh, the, the French touch, we can say, uh, regarding biodiversity issues? Um. Yeah, so it's uh, about the value added of AFD in the region. I think uh, thanks to our agency network, we are on the ground because we have six agencies really in the Caribbean working on their territories. And that's uh, very important for us to, you know, uh, uh, preserve the links with the population and on the ground. And also um, it's been said before, but it's very important to highlight that AFD forms a group with Proparco and Expertise France. And um, as a group, we can um, 
uh, we can uh, think about projects on the whole uh, chain from the beginning to the end. From the, for example, ProBarco, the private subsidiary, takes over when economic sectors have emerged. Yeah, I would be fully in line with that. I mean, we, we can use now the multiplicity of the tools of the group and uh, Expertise France can work uh, on the technical assistance and on public policies. But uh, of course, uh, AFD uh, can then uh, be able to finance some projects that are emerging from this uh, uh, public policies and, and from these uh, implementation strategies and and of course Proparco uh, as uh, uh, Clara was mentioning can can, can also be uh, work with uh, with the private sector so I think uh, we have a, a very good complementarity and the capacity to work uh, well uh, with the most efficient tool depending on also on, on the local uh, capacity and, and on the local financial context so I think uh, we can we have a, a no very a uh, complete uh, and, and multiplicity of tools in the group. <clears throat> Thank you so much, both of you. I think that we will go now on the next session uh, regarding, uh, well, how to build uh, the regional response to preserve biodiversity in the Caribbean Iceland. So we will have on the floor uh, Virginie uh, Clérima uh, and uh, Ch uh, Emmanuel Chamberlain. Uh, perhaps just to introduce uh, this session, just to say, as I mentioned previously, that uh, the nexus of biodiversity and climate is uh, particularly relevant in the Caribbean region, as it is impossible to combat climate change without taking into account biodiversity issues. And because uh, Caribbean territories are quite dependent on healthy natural resources. So climate change is disturbing ecosystem and at the same time working to preserve natural resource means working to make these territories more resilient. Uh, so I would like to, to, to ask to uh, first of all to Virginie, which is the project manager for the Caribsan project at the International Office for Water to, uh, to, to, to mention uh, what has been done in the, the project, in this specific project at the regional level, uh, which aims uh, to uh, promote planted filters for wastewater treatment in the Caribbean. So Virginie, if you are able to intervene. If uh, Virginie is not there, Okay, so I will start. Sorry, I did not see uh, uh, the chat. Uh, so we will start. Uh, sorry, with uh, with Emmanuel Chamberlain, which is the head of the Environmental Sustainable Sustainability Division of the OECS Commission. Uh, so uh, you, I will give you the floor, so to to give the approach, the vision of the OECS regarding uh, uh, the different uh, issues regarding wastewater management treatment and other uh, kind of project. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. I'm assuming you can um, hear me clearly. Um, bonjour, good day to everyone. Um, Mr. Ambassador and distinguished colleagues from EFD, Expertise France, and uh, CBF and other agencies and colleagues who have joined us for this conversation. So we, um, my short presentation will um, look at the brief context. I think as we all have reiterated um, before, uh, then we will look at the how we work. Uh, so my focus will be on more how regional integration um, is leverage for these priorities and then at the end mention uh, just um, some few examples um, where this is where this is applied um, for those of you who may not be familiar the organization of eastern caribbean states is an you know, integration of the 11 smallest of the seeds in the caribbean uh, we also include um, at this time two of um, the French departments in Martin and Guadeloupe, and soon to be joined um, by French and Martin. 
And so as has been um, said, the Caribbean seeds are endowed with a, with a rich and globally unique biodiversity and these natural resources are the foundation for the primary productive sectors in the region, including tourism, agriculture, fisheries, manufacturing, as well as health and livelihoods. These are also part of our cultural heritage and contribute nationally and regionally to water and food security, climate resilience, and overall sustainable development. The region has been identified as one of the world's top biodiversity hotspots due to a severe degree of habitat loss and vulnerability to extinctions, with, uh, which include habitat destruction and fragmentation due to increasing urbanization, conservation, uh, conversion of lands for tourism and commercial development, and the expansion of agriculture. Invasive species pollution and overexploitation of living resources are also significant concerns. And um, also to indicate that these challenges continue to be exacerbated by the effects of climate change, such as ocean, ocean warming and acidification, increased severity of drought, and increased frequency and intensity of hurricanes. Additionally, the Eastern Caribbean states face a range of institutional challenges, including insufficient awareness or the values of biodiversity, weak environmental legislation, and, and limited data, inadequate human and technical capacity, and insufficient funding for biodiversity. The OECS approach, therefore, recognizes that while each member, states, member state has its own vision, policies, tools, and approaches available in accordance with its national circumstances and priorities, joint and collective action is indispensable in building a resilient environment and society. The St. George's Declaration of Principles for Environmental Sustainability in the Eastern Caribbean has been our foundational framework, which has been guiding our work in this space, and it identifies 10 enabling actions for building a regional response. As shown here, it includes partnerships, good governance, capacity building, education, research, data, uh, m and &E, monitor and evaluation, regional cooperation, equality and inclusivity, and innovative and financing mechanism. The strategic priorities and enabling actions of SGD 2040, as it's, as it's uh, called, resonate with the work programs of national environmental agencies, regional agencies, such as the OECS Commission, CARICOM, and its associated organs and other regional and international agencies, including the various multilateral environmental uh, convention secretariats. In pursuit of implementing the aspirations of the revised Treaty of Bastia, which establishes the OECS as an organization, and the SGD 2040 that I mentioned in the previous slide, the OECS Council of Ministers on Environmental Sustainability has agreed clear, distilled priorities and a consolidated approach aimed at addressing relevant vulnerabilities and opportunities. And these are shown here. They are sweet. We are, they are summarized our work in three buckets, so to speak, which also align with our the strategic priorities of the OECS Commission, and these are to advance sustainable economy approaches, green, blue, circular economy, also building resilience in ecosystems, communities, and sectors to be stronger, better, smarter. And these two are enabled by the third foundational, which is championing healthy and productive natural capital. And biodiversity conservation is, is really at the heart of this. I will speak to the three uh, on the side as we move forward, which speaks to the how. 
And so the St. George's Declaration affirms that sustainable development in the Eastern Caribbean can be achieved only through a broad alliance of people, governments, civil society, the private sector, and international development partners all working together. While governments should take the lead, all partners should be adequately engaged and empowered to participate in the formulation and implementation of decisions, policies, and programs to achieve the desired outcomes. Partnerships should seek to build synergistic relationships to promote efficiency in resource allocation, support continuity of efforts, and minimize stakeholder fatigue and friction. The OECS Council of Ministers on Environmental Sustainability holds annual meetings of policymakers, development partners, and the OECS Commission, uh, which has and has oversight for implementation of the St. George's Declaration in the OECS. The Council of Ministers guides the work of the Commission and to some extent development partners. The, the Council of Ministers meets at least once yearly with active participation of policymakers, that is ministers and senior technical officials, development partners, and the commission's programs. For we also have a series of regional coordinating mechanisms, and that includes the Biodiversity and Ecosystems Management Committee and the Ocean Governance Team. These are regional mechanisms for ocean and marine issues and biodiversity and ecosystems management and comprise focal points or representatives with responsibility for these thematic areas. For example, the Biodiversity and Ecosystems Management Committee has championed the development of the biodiversity and ecosystems framework, which includes five priority areas, and that is protecting, maintaining, and restoring ecosystems. Secondly, invasive species, biosafety, and biosecurity management. Third, climate and disaster resilience. Fourth, fair and equitable access to and sharing of benefits from biodiversity resources. And fifth, accessing and integrating biodiversity, assessing, sorry, and integrating biodiversity and ecosystems into the national development processes. A similar approach was utilized for the Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy, which guides our um, ocean governance team, as well as our OECS Green Blue Economy Strategy and Action Plan. Access to information to access, sorry, access to information is key as we, I speak to the, the next pillar of sound intelligence. Access to information is key to ensuring transparent and inclusive public participation for environmental sustainability. Stakeholders need to be adequately educated, informed, empowered, and engaged to participate meaningfully in environmental decision making, enhance advocacy attitudes and practices. Data, information, and knowledge are fundamental concepts or tools in knowledge management, intellectual um, capital, and organizational learning. These support decision-making and actions. The OECS is promoting the use of environmental information systems, and as much as possible, is seeking to consolidate and harmonize these to reduce the burden are on stakeholders for monitoring and reporting. And the third key um, element of our approach is smart investments. Uh, so thirdly and importantly, sustainable financing is one of our current priorities and it cuts across many of the other enabling actions. Sustainable financing is about the generation and mobilization of funds over the long term for sustainable management of natural resources. 
these financial resources are necessary for the conservation of environmental assets, resilience building, and for overall sustainable development. The high level of OECS government indebtedness and fiscal constraints are a real impediment to the level of predictable investments required. Paramount is a need for a resource ecosystem of traditional, new, innovative, and sustainable financing options and arrangements to support policy, research, regulatory, finance, and implementation capacity needs, and to assist with the mobilization and, de and deployment of more resources, including a greater degree of collaboration between the public and private sector and civil society interests. So as I get ready to wrap up, just want to share with you, so I spent uh, the focus on the how we work, just want to share also a little on some of our actual interventions as depicted here. The OECS Commission has also collaborated with development partners, um, including um, the Adjust for Says the Development, AFD, to mobilize resources and, and implement initiatives aimed at biodiversity, conservation, land and water resources management. The OECS and CARICOM have been engaged in the Euro Clima Dialogue mentioned uh, previously, mobilization for national ecosystems assessments, regional cooperation, and, uh, and these have been used to a great effect by, um, by CARICOM and, and ourselves to develop regional positions and strategies at key negotiations for, on multilateral environmental agreements, including the Paris Agreement, including the BBNJ negotiations, as well as the coming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, which was approved um, last year. And of course, the Paris Treaty, which was just, um, or, uh, which um, has been engaged um, in the past few days. I want to, I would, it's not, I will not do justice if I don't um, point out this um, very, uh, this flagship initiative, which we did in association with AFD under the Adaptation, support from AFD, which um, advanced um, a framework for building resilience with nature and gender. This is putting biodiversity and nature-based approaches and um, at the center of building re um, resilience and ensuring the engagement and benefits to our most vulnerable communities. So just to end by indicating that we work very closely with um, multiple partners, including um, AFD. Um, we will try to work in a very interconnected way and our various programs. So while the Biodiversity and Ecosystems um, Services Program is a feature here today, we also have our Sustainable Ocean Management, our Climate and Disaster Resilience, and Sustainable Energy Programs, which all work in an integrated way because those issues cut across all these thematic areas. So thank you thank so much um, for your attention and I remain available for any clarification. Thank you, Emmanuel, for your presentation. So now Virginie is coming back with us. So Virginie, uh, I will not present you again because I did it. So the floor is yours for your presentation and you just have 10 minutes because we've got some delay now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And can you hear me? It's okay? Yes, it's okay. Thanks. So sorry for the technical issues, but I'm here now. So good day, everyone. I'm uh, Virginie Clérimal, the Caribbean Project uh, Manager in Martinique for the International uh, Office for Water. And uh, I'm pleased to say uh, a few words about uh, Caribbean Project uh, with this uh, little presentation. Uh, Caribbean uh, states uh, face uh, a common uh, context regarding the issues of sanitation and uh, we said that, that the majority of population lives uh, near the fragile uh, ecosystem and coastal areas. These zones are used for habitation, activities, hobbies. Uh, however, wastewater is often 
and should be functionally treated and uh, it's leading to the discharge of pollution and uh, that's how dangerous for human health and uh, biodiversity. With Carib Sun, we think that nature-based uh, solution can be a uh, solution sorry, for sanitation issues. With treatment wetland, uh, we treat wastewater by um, drawing inspiration for the purification process from the nature. It's a filtration mechanism with uh, bacteria that consume uh, organic pollution. And uh, it's relatively simple, but uh, it's designed um, by uh, different uh, layers and sand and gravels. And uh, this treatment wetland involves a complex uh, interaction between water, soil, plants, microorganisms, and the atmosphere. This means that uh, they have to be designed uh, precisely uh, and to meet a specific need uh, of uh, sanitation and treatment of uh, wastewater. Before Caribs uh, there was a previous experimentation in Martinique and Guadeloupe who developed a, a wastewater treatment using the treatment wetland, adapt to tropical and uh, unsolar condition. It was a consortium of uh, French uh, researcher and actor uh, during uh, five years. And uh, the, they are working on, uh, they work on the, um, the searching of a local plant, the Heliconia. And um, there was a, a full scale uh, test of this technique. So this nature-based uh, system has uh, demonstrated uh, an efficativeness uh, for um, several years now, eight or yeah, eight years now, and uh, have uh, many advantages, like being simple, cheaper to build and manage than the conventional uh, wastewater treatment and system that we have uh, in uh, in Martinique or Guadeloupe, and resistant to the climatic uh, disturbance of tropical regions like heavy rains or cyclones. The Caribs and project uh, aims to promote the, the plain-based uh, wastewater treatment uh, solution for the, the Caribbean. So the water stakeholders from Cuba, Dominica, Saint Lucia, Guadeloupe and uh, Martinique uh, have decided to work uh, together to improve sanitation by using the constructed wetland. And um, we have uh, many objectives like I said, promote the treatment wetland for wastewater treatment, but also enhance uh, the Caribbean cooperation uh, for sanitation. Also disseminate knowledge on this technique. It's a project uh, who will uh, last uh, five years. Uh, it's led by Martinique uh, Water Office, implemented by the International Office of Water. It involves uh, five uh, Caribbean territories, like say Cuba, Dominica, Saint Lucia. Uh, we work in uh, three languages. There is, uh, there are sorry, 35 uh, engineers, and it's financed by the European Union and, of course, the AFT for 20 uh, percent. So we thought that uh, Caribbean can contribute. Sorry. To, uh, to the reduction of the impact of wastewater on environmental and health uh, emergency on the, Cari on the Caribbean. Caribbean is organized into five uh, work package. I will be quick, uh, quick on this slide. Uh, the preliminary study is uh, supported by the National Institute for Agriculture and Environmental Research. It's uh, to search uh, a local plant in each country, studies uh, the um, sizing of um, the future um, sites, the future pilot sites, developing the, um, an open access tool who, um, to design uh, the field, the um, wetland in every country. Um, we have capacity building, training for all actors in sanitation at different levels. It's for public or private owners, uh, for, sorry, public or private uh, actors, like uh, public owners, plant owners, designer, constructor. And it's laid by the Water Office for Water with the help of the CAWASA, the Caribbean Association for Water and Wastewater Treatment. 
also communication uh, with the website, which is um, intended to be a term, uh, a platform for documentation and constructed wetland in three languages also. And uh, the fifth one is the construction for the, of the three uh, treatment wetland pilot, as pilot sites. And it will start, uh, we hope, uh, next year. Uh, I will be quick, quick sorry, on some uh, illustration of Caribbean activities. So it was a work package one, like uh, the launch of the project in virtual meeting uh, in September 2021. Uh, studies, uh, activities in St. Lucia, Cuba and Dominica. Uh, we uh, we find uh, potential sites uh, for the construction, for the, the building, sorry, the building of the pilot sites. The capacity building is uh, the major uh, work package we develop uh, for, uh, for now. It's a training on the technology of treatment wetland uh, in Martinique, but uh, on-site in Martinique in three languages. But also uh, there, is a, there were several webinars uh, with the Carasa, um, with the Cotram, a French constructor, and um, we had more than 50 participants from uh, different countries on, uh, of the Caribbean, like Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados, of course, Dominica, St. Lucia, Cuba, Trinidad and Tobago, also public or private uh, company or uh, organization. Uh, our website, our social media like Facebook, YouTube, you can, uh, you can uh, visit our, our page. Uh, like I said, it's a website in three languages and uh, we want to, um, to have this website like a platform for documentation for, uh, for treatment wetland. The cooperation is uh, also very important uh, uh, on this project, of course, and uh, we met in December last year for a technical forum with all the Caribbean team. So Cuba, St. Lucia and uh, Dominican actor, they, can, they met and went and worked uh, together and share, um, share uh, issues or good ideas. As we are working uh, on a subject that uh, affects us uh, directly, um, I think that the project team in these five territories uh, have succeeded uh, in creating a motivated and productive uh, working environment. There is a real synergy between uh, the, the teams and uh, we are now developing a partnership with, uh, between Martinique, Cuba and Dominica for plant research. But also, we are facing uh, some difficulties because it's uh, sometimes difficult to, to, uh, to uh, work in three uh, different languages. But the travel, the, like uh, the travel yeah, across the Caribbean is not always uh, easy. And uh, the economic exchanges uh, for appreciate uh, equipment with embargo or maybe partition between French or English system, it's uh, also an issue. Um, the evaluation for human research with different wage costs is uh, also uh, something we are facing now for the design of the Caribbean uh, phase two. So what's next? Uh, we are... Uh, we, yeah, it's, sorry, uh, the next, next week, we uh, welcome in Martinique uh, the regional conference, the Caribbean conference during two days uh, for presentation of the results uh, of the phase one of Caribbean, but also for uh, sites visits. Uh, it's a key uh, event uh, for us, which will uh, facilitate exchanges between uh, decision makers, local and national uh, authorities from uh, all the Caribbean. We have representatives from 12 uh, Caribbean regions and country uh, with the presence of the French uh, Secretary of State uh, for Ecology. Uh, also, um, um, Vladimir Matos Moya, the Vice uh, President of uh, National Issue uh, Institute, sorry, for hydraulic resources from Cuba. So it's uh, quite big. <laughs> 
And uh, in July this year, uh, we think we are quite ready to um, to to launch the Carrison Phase Two for the construction of the wastewater treatment uh, plant in Cuba, in Dominica, and Saint Lucia. So this is uh, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. And uh, I'm pleased you know, if you have uh, any question, um, I would be pleased to, to answer them. Thank you. Sorry, I was speaking, but I uh, didn't uh, unmute. Uh, no, th thank you again, Virginie, for this uh, presentation on nature-based solution, which is quite important. I uh, just would like to say that uh, AFD support uh, IUCNs to be able to uh, to provide uh, guidelines on methodologies at the global level for the, the nature-based solution. So we are quite uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, in, 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 uh, implementing uh, this uh, this uh, global uh, this global uh, aspect of uh, uh, mainstreaming uh, uh, biodiversity and to be able to uh, to, to provide some uh, uh, clear uh, <coughs> capacity of our partners uh, to to be able to 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 find ways for natural based solution and I would like to to, to know if uh, for our colleagues from uh, uh, the CBF if the, the the cbf is able so it's a question for karen if we are uh, cbf is provide some support uh, to the different uh, countries at the regional level to be able to finance this kind of uh, natural based solution uh, karen if you are still on the on the loop well if it is not the case perhaps another questions regarding emmanuel uh, you, you, you present also some uh, different uh, uh, projects uh, at the regional level, but because uh, we know that uh, the, 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 the different countries in the Caribbean are quite different from one to, to the other, uh, it is uh, uh, easy or difficult to, uh, to try to, uh, to, uh, to have joint, uh, uh, joint uh, decision on, the, uh, on orientation. Uh, regarding uh, this kind of project like natural based solution or other type of project that you are funding yes thanks for, for the you, question after Karen is coming back so if you could be quick in your response okay thanks thanks again um yes well uh, our member states really share many things in common a lot of the the issues are, are similar and so um we are able to to craft um you know projects and initiatives that align with that similarity. Um, as I indicated, through the various um, regional coordinating mechanisms, we're able to dialogue um, so that we can co-create together that which resonates with, with, with uh, most of our states. And um, we also have those regional frameworks, the strategies and action plans, etc., which through a series of dialogues and assessments would have been able to to distill what are the what are the areas that are best um, implemented at a regional level. Thank you, Emmanuel. And Karen, I don't know if you hear my questions regarding the capacity of CBF to finance this kind of nature-based solution at the regional level, and if you are doing that or if you plan to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we are already doing work with funding from um the german government in particular in in terms of nature-based solutions through a project called eco-based adaptation and that is working across the region um giving ideas and allowing giving grants to uh, larger regional organizations who are have come up with projects but in addition we have the national conservation trust fund that work through our endowment fund which receive direct funding from our endowment and are regularly making sure that we are finding and, and funding projects um, in terms of national responsibility, national actions on nature-based solutions and other biodiversity-based solutions.
<clears throat> thank you, Karen. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I don't know if we got time to uh, try to have another question because we, we have a question at the beginning from Charlene regarding the, 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 the Sargassum project. And the, I would like to ask to uh, Clara uh, what uh, if you have got some uh, some uh, some elements to uh, to answer to that question. So what I've been doing regarding Sargassum project, even it is at the beginning stage, uh, we are at the instruction uh, phase. So we have a feasibility study, which will be done in the in the coming uh, uh, weeks. But uh, Clara, if you were able to answer a little bit about it. Yes, thank you very much, Guillaume. So IFD is uh, trying to have an action on Sargassum because uh, because it's, uh, it's a huge problem in the Caribbean, but it can also be seen as an opportunity to uh, to do something with the sargassum. That's why we are launching a feasibility study uh, that would um, take this holistic approach from the detection in the sea to the uh, collection, uh, going through uh, what, what you can do with, with them. And um, it's a, a project that is just beginning, but it's um, it's it's uh, it's a pro we are already financing the initiative SARCOOP uh, launched from the Regional Council of Guadeloupe, and uh, this uh, initiative, our initiative, will uh, be in complementarity uh, to this initiative. So it's uh, it's to do things that are not already done by the Regional Council of Guadeloupe, and uh, so we we are really. Uh, hoping that we can make this project in 2024 based on the results of the feasibility studies. And uh, we are also hoping that it can be a Team Europe initiative and to embark the European Union with, with us on the subject. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Clara, for this uh, precision. Uh, so I think that I have uh, the, uh, the responsibility to close uh, this webinar. So I just would like to, uh, to, to mention, uh, first of all, uh, as it has been said by our French ambassador in Santa Lucia, that uh, well, uh, biodiversity issues are quite important at the regional level. And uh, uh, the French cooperation at the global and the, the, the French group, the EFD group, uh, is uh, is uh, is keen to to intervene in this uh, area. So uh, linking as much as possible the the, 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 the climate issues on the biodiversity issues we are fully aligned with the paris agreement we are also fully aligned with the agreement uh, uh, of montreal uh, cop 15 uh, in last december so uh, uh, it is the case of course in the caribbean uh, uh, sea but it is also the, the case in the other uh, uh, countries where we intervene at the regional level it is the case for example in the pacific where we have a project which is called uh, Initiative Kiwa, uh, which is uh, uh, trying to develop ecosystem-based uh, solution. Uh, we are also uh, funding a project which is called Varuna in the Indian Ocean, which is also trying to uh, to try to find a natural-based solution at the global at the global level. So intervention of AFD uh, is possible uh, at regional level, at the national level, and we are trying also. Uh, to be able to uh, to put in in in, uh, <coughs> in, in uh, cooperation uh, the different uh, the, the 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 French overseas territories with the with the with the the countries the, the the foreign countries at the at the regional level and for us it's quite interesting because we are able able to, in doing so uh, to, uh, to 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 share our expertise to share the expertise of uh, of, of of the of French uh, cooperation at a global level, but also uh, to, to have uh, this interlink with the with different, different countries and the different uh, partners. So uh, <clears throat> thanks again for, 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 this, uh, for this webinar organized by our Directorate of uh, uh, <clears throat> Atlantic Ocean. And uh, thank you to uh, all the participants uh, to, to, be, to be with us and to share the experience of, uh, of uh, projects at the regional level of uh, the Caribbean Sea. Thank you again. Bye.